when we exercise, our whole body feels the change. Our heart beats faster, the breathing deepens, and even our muscles work harder. But have you ever thought what exactly happens to our blood when you exercise? How does your blood help your body to keep up with all the extra work? Today, we will dive into this fascinating journey of what happens to your blood when you exercise. And it will be very helpful to you because if you keep your circulation intact and take due precautions, then the exercises will really help you stay younger and fit. So let's start with the first segment, which is blood circulation before exercise or at rest. So when you are at rest, the heart pumps approximately 5 liters of blood every minute to various parts of the body. And the, all the tissues receive oxygen and they pass on the waste nutrients which go into veins and are carried back to the heart. And all this works in a circular fashion called as our circulatory system. And at rest, all your vital organs, mainly the brain, kidney, liver and intestine get most of the blood flow because these are vital organs which need oxygen and nutrients even when you're not doing anything else. Your muscles get a very limited amount of blood flow when you are not walking and exercising because they are more active when you are active. And when you are resting, your heart rate and blood pressure all remains within a normal range. So now coming to the second part of this video, which is what happens when you start exercising. So the moment you start exercising, it may be walking, running or even yoga or lifting weights all the muscles start working hard and they are in immediate need of more blood supply, more oxygen and more nutrients. Your body notices and senses this immediately through special receptors within your muscles which are called as chemoreceptors or mechanoreceptors. These sensors send a signal to your brain that the heart rate needs to increase, the heart pressure needs to increase and the heart needs to work extra to deliver blood to these working organs or muscles. Similarly, your blood vessels also respond by widening or dilating to accommodate more blood supply within these muscles. So the whole system runs to improve the blood circulation and accommodate for the increase in blood circulation, deliver more oxygen to the muscles and make sure that they are able to help you exercise. But if you're exercising at a rate which is much faster than the blood can deliver oxygen, then you're likely to develop an anaerobic metabolism with an increase in lactic acid within your muscle. And it's this lactic acid which gives rise to those cramps, soreness and pain after you exercise. Now let us understand the third part which is what happens to the heart when you exercise. One of the most noticeable changes which happens immediately is an increase in heart rate. So when you exercise, you will see that your heart rate suddenly shoots up. This is meant to improve the efficiency of your pumping mechanism of the heart. And the same heart, which was pumping only 5 liters a minute, in very strong and endurance prone athletes, it can pump almost up to 25 liters per minute when the need arises. So when the heart is pumping fast, and harder, your arteries also have to accommodate for that. And that is when your blood pressure, the systolic blood pressure also increases to give more blood flow to the end organs. However, the diastolic pressure or the lower pressure will remain same or it may actually reduce because that reflects the smaller blood vessels within the tissues. So the diastolic blood pressure may reduce while the systolic blood pressure will increase when you exercise. Now coming to an important part, which is blood redistribution during exercise. As I told earlier that at rest, the vital organs get most of the blood flow while the skin and muscles get very little. But when you're exercising, this may actually reverse. So most of the blood flow from your digestive organs is also then transferred or shifted to the muscles which are exercising. However, the brain, kidney and liver will still continue to draw blood because they are the most vital organs and blood supply needs to be maintained to these vital organs almost continuously. A fun fact is that at rest, your muscles would have less than 20% of your overall blood flow. But when you exercise, the muscles can get almost 80% of the overall blood flow. That's the difference that exercise can make to your muscles. 
This is also helpful because of this shift in blood flow. You will tend to sweat more and throw out toxins even while you are exercising. So sweating is a mechanism of flushing out toxins from your skin while you are exercising. The interesting fifth part is about what happens to oxygen when you are exercising. Our blood carries oxygen through a special cell called as red blood cells within which there is a special protein called as hemoglobin. Yes, it's the same hemoglobin which you have in your blood tests. And the oxygen binds to hemoglobin and hemoglobin within the red blood cells takes it through all the organs which need it. So when you exercise, your breath rate, your breathing also increases to help deliver more oxygen. So more oxygen gets bound to the hemoglobin and is carried to all the organs. However, if the amount of oxygen that your lungs can get is less than what is required at the tissue level, you will develop an anaerobic metabolism as I said earlier and are likely to develop lactic acidosis because of that anaerobic metabolism. However, for most of the people, a normal amount of lactic acid collecting inside the tissues can be easily taken away by the same blood which goes through the veins. But if lactic acid accumulates much fast than it can be sent, then your muscles will tire down and make you slow down. If someone still continues doing it, then those toxins can build up and impair your muscle contraction, sometimes leading to problems which may even cause heart attack. And that's one of the reasons that you would have seen that even marathon runners tend to go till the last bit and then suddenly they develop a heart problem. It is because they have pushed the limits and went into an anaerobic metabolism and those metabolites then give rise to myocardial depression. Along with this, another important change that happens with exercise is changes in the blood viscosity. Our blood is normally made up of blood cells and plasma and the viscosity is maintained at a certain level. But when you exercise, the chances of getting dehydrated, losing water and hence your blood would become more thick or viscous. So if your blood becomes thicker, then exercise may become more difficult. And that is the reason you would have seen that people who exercise very vigorously, either in the gym or in marathons or triathletes who do not take care of their hydration are, are again more prone to develop blood clots related problems, especially in the heart. So taking care of your hydration while you are exercising is very crucial to prevent any of those problems. So what happens in the long term when you do exercising regularly? Regular exercise is known to have long-term benefits to your whole body, not just the muscles that you're working out for. The blood vessels become much more stronger and flexible. Even the lungs, the oxygenation within the lungs also is known to improve in people who exercise regularly. And when your heart becomes stronger, when you exercise very regularly, what is noticed is that the heart becomes much more efficient. So the resting pulse rate of the heart rate will be much less in athletes because it, the heart has now become a very efficient system. So the resting heart rate in many of these athletes may be as low as 50 per minute. And the last few words about exercises for people who have vascular problems ranging from veins to arteries. So I always advise all the people and patients that I see that do exercise regularly to improve your circulation. So for arteries, Regular exercise is known to open up collateral channels which are kinds of natural bypasses that the blood can develop and that helps to maintain circulation despite having blocked arteries. So if someone notices any artery blockages in time, does a regular lifestyle measure and helps by improving collaterals by doing regular exercises, then they may avoid future surgeries as well. On the other side, for veins, because the leg veins, where varicose veins, deep vein thrombosis or venous insufficiency is so common, the vein blood in the leg needs to come towards the heart. And that is where the veins are very heavily dependent on your leg muscles to help push that blood upwards. So if you exercise regularly and make sure that your leg strength is good, the calf muscles or the calf pump is very active, even vein circulation and varicose veins problems can be very well controlled with exercise. So all those people who have problems or do not have problems, exercising can help you really well. 
and if you're looking for exercises that can help you stay younger then this video we've shown just that